Hey, do you remember that religious text about Moses, where a mother puts her baby in a basket and leaves him in a river? You know the one, where all the firstborn sons are rounded up and killed. These are the names of the firstborn sons of Gotham City, and like me, a terrible fate waits for them. Or the one where Jesus is killed at 33 years old. Yeah, that's Batman Tongues. Now, as I said in my last essay, Batman Returns was the second Batman thing that I had ever seen. And I thought then what I think now. Wow, this is an amazing Christmas film. Now, it is an argument that still rages today alongside that of Die Hard, or whether or not you think it's a Christmas film. But people will argue that because Batman Returns was, was released on the 10th of July of 1992 that it can't possibly be a Christmas film. But, on that thesis, there's those same people would argue that The Miracle on 34th Street wouldn't be a Christmas film either, if it was released in the summer. I mean, of course it would. I mean, let's take a look at the Pogues and Kirsty McCall's song Fairy Tale of New York, for example. It wasn't released as a Christmas song, but it's the only time of year that it gets any radio play. Batman Returns is a classic case of a studio giving the director complete free roam after a previous movie success. Seriously, all you really need to do is just watch Batman 1989 and then watch Batman Returns and you'll see exactly what I mean. It's no secret that Tim Burton is an auteur, a director with a certain visual style. This was especially apparent back in the day of Beetlejuice and Edward Scissorhands. Both of those films had minimal set design, both protagonists lived in a creepy residence that sat upon a hill. Both films had creepy graveyards and all that sort of thing. But Warner Brothers didn't want to give Burton a style in the very first Batman film. But after its success, they did, and it's very apparent. Creepy zoo settings, duck vehicles, and the Batter ride. It's all very Burton-esque. Now, I've already discussed in the previous essay the mistakes I believe Burton made with not building the Batman or Bruce Wayne characters properly. Because in this sequel, it was never going to happen. But in the Batman 1989 film, we got an in-depth look at the origin of the Joker. A very good portrayal by Jack Nicholson. But in Batman Returns, it's the villains that get the special treatment again. Penguin is discarded by his parents who are ashamed of him. This causes or this, this gains sympathy from the audience. Catwoman is a secretary who stumbled upon something she shouldn't have and is murdered for it. Again, creating sympathy from the audience. But to be honest, with the Catwoman example, Matt Shrek should probably be ashamed of himself for not getting the job done. I mean, he pushed her through a top floor window. One thing I'd like to say about characterisation in these films is how little screen time Commissioner Gordon gets. I mean, it's fair enough, in the first instalment, Batman's brand new. So Gordon's screen time is probably adequate. But in this one, with Batman now having a signal, I think we should have seen more Batman and Gordon working together. I mean, Gordon is an early ally of Batman in the comics. But yet, in this film, I think he has a total of two scenes. What are you waiting for? The signal. Thanks for saving the day, Batman. I'm afraid the circus gang is back. We'll see. They almost made off with our mover and shaker, Max Shrek, but I... Where is that insufferable son of a bitch? Catwoman is played perfectly by Michelle Pfeiffer in this film, in my opinion. She's a woman who can't break the glass ceiling in her career, although she feels she has more to offer. There's a little too much exposition in her coming home scene for me. I mean, she tells us that there are no men in her life, yet we have to listen to the answer machine message of a guy cancelling a trip with her. She has her altercation with Shrek, before being revived with the power of cat licking, whatever the f*** <coughs> that is. She goes on a rampage when she returns to her own apartment before deciding to alter some leather clothing and becoming what she went on to become. Now, personally, I like this character up until this part. I mean, Catwoman is a clever, manipulative woman, and although Pfeiffer plays this well, I just, it just doesn't make sense how you can go from psycho to ass kicker in the space of a costume creation. And another question, where did she learn to fight so good so quick? We'll move on to the Penguin, who is perfectly cast. Danny DeVito does an outstanding job in this role, although after playing the Arkham and Telltale games, 
Hearing any penguin without a cockney accent kinda ruins it for me now. DeVito's on edge screen presence alongside his calm, uneasy demeanour gives off a truly frightening penguin. Burton does a good job of making the audience sympathise with him visually at the start of the film with him being essentially left to die by his parents, only for him then to find his parents dead when he returns 33 years later. The questions I continually ask myself when watching this is, who raised him in the sewer when he was an infant? Who fed him? Was it the penguins? Because that just doesn't make any sense. Maybe I'm just paying too much attention, but someone has to. After Penguin's plan is foiled by Batman, he goes into full meltdown mode and again, DeVito delivers. However, his climactic scene with Batman is such a letdown to the point you're left face palming yourself after watching a bad fight only to see Penguin defeated by, get this, a swarm of bats that Batman keeps in his bat boat. Tim Burton eh? The film as a whole is okay. I know there were issues with the bat suit that caused manoeuvrability problems for Keaton, but I feel that the fight scenes could have done with a little bit more. I think more could have been done with Bruce Wayne than just making him a vehicle for the romance angle, much like the Batman 1989 movie. But for me personally, this is one of my favourite Christmas films. However, I will say that at any other time of the year, I think I'd take Burton's first Batman film over this one. However, my next video will be a brief one on how much better Batman Forever would have been if Joe Schumacher hadn't been restrained by Warner Brothers with a few edits and a look at the deleted scenes. Another couple of videos that are coming your way are a top 10 best villains from the DCU and a top 10 villains from the MCU, so look out for that one. As usual guys, if you like the video, please leave a like and share with your friends who are perhaps movie fans and invite them to share their opinion. Is Batman Returns a Christmas film? Is there religious samples in the film? Or have I just spent this whole time talking rubbish that you disagree with? Let me know in the comments. Also, remember, I have a Patreon page where you can contribute to the cause. Money raised goes towards making my own short movies, so I will try to get a script up if you want to see them. And if you like the idea and you want to be credited in the creation, then head over there now. The link is in the description. But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take this time just to say thank you very much for sitting through another video essay of mine. My name has been Rasmus Pai and you have been absolutely fantastic for watching. Until next time, gotta fly!